This tropical African country is set at the equator but has snow on top of its highest mountain, the Ruenzori. Uganda boasts of temperate climate and picturesque highlands. It also harbors the world's second largest freshwater lake, the Victoria, which is also the source of the world's second longest river, the Nile. Britain's famous wartime Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill, once proclaimed it as the Pearl of Africa in his book, My African Journey. From the capital, the country is split into five major destinations. The east, the north, the west, the central and the islands. Each one a unique experience in itself. Jinja. This is where Africa's longest river begins its journey to the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt. There are rapids further downstream which are a major destination for white water rafters at Wujagali. An irregular outgrowth from the earth which is a symbol of Uganda's strange relief features on the eastern axis. The east is a journey into African heritage. Moving more northeastwards, one encounters the Karamajong people whose passion for cattle is very intense. They live in Manyatas, a collection of huts in an enclosure. The visitor will also come across the Chidepo Valley National Park, a semi-desert savanna with a wide range of rare animal species. The western part of Uganda is one beautiful wonderland. There are golden grasslands. They are grazed by the graceful Ankole cattle. Undulating hills with terraced gardens. Thick tropical rainforests. And a snow-picked mountain, the Rezoris. There are game parks, game reserves, and forest reserves in this region. Two and a half hours away from Kampala, one begins to see the wild animals. Lake Mburo National Park is home to the zebra, that beautiful horse-like animal, so tasty to the lion. There are also numerous antelopes and bucks. But the biggest trophy here is the mountain gorilla. Many visitors here come to track the rare mountain gorilla, which is found only in this part of the world. In southwestern Uganda, we come to Lake Bunyonyi, Uganda's deepest lake. A boat ride on the lake is an unforgettable experience. A picturesque and colorful sight of terraced Chigezi hills give the visitor a sense of living of a lifetime dream of encountering a perfect terrestrial beauty. Bird watching on the shores of the lake is a bonus for the visitor. Within this backdrop are beautiful crater lakes, a result of early earth movements. One other water mass here is the Lake Katwe, a sold excavation site that dates back thousands of years. It is evidence of a great salt industry and trade that stretch all over the entire interlacustrian region. The Queen Elizabeth National Park. Once inside the park, the huge array of animal species will parade before you in their natural casts, some stopping to stare at the intruder with curiosity. The Queen Elizabeth is a majestic expression of the meaning of the word safari, that Swahili word now adapted by the English language to mean travel. Thousands of mountain climbers have made their way to the Margarita Peak, where it is always snow, as in the polar regions of the world. Making one's way to the top is a feat in itself. It is like a summary of the earth here. And this is what has attracted famous people to the Rezoris. One of them, the Italian Duke of Abruzzi, took photographs in 1906 and wrote a book that was to make the Rezoris world famous. The 
destination for bird watching, chimpanzee tracking, and community walks. And then there are the Sempire Hot Springs, a two acre of bubbling steam from underneath the earth. People come here from near and far to bath in the healing steam of the hot springs. Check the Seziwa Falls, 45 minutes drive from Kampala. Then there's the Sipi Falls in the eastern part of the country, famous for its attractiveness, in addition to ancient myths about it. It is endowed with temperate weather that gives the traveler a good feeling while resting in the green gardens overlooking the falls. The recent history is also marked by the impact of Arabs and Europeans. These visitors who first traded in slaves, guns and trinkets left more of an enduring mark on the land and the people of East Africa. At Namugongo, they are Muslim, Protestant and Catholic shrines to commemorate the famous Uganda matters. These people were martyred by Mwanga, a Buganda monarch, who was against the foreign influence on his subjects as brought along by the new religions. He ordered them to denounce their faith at the pain of death. They met their death with great spirit and enthusiasm and have since been beatified by the Roman Catholic Church and honored by Uganda, which has set aside a national day in their memory. Pilgrims from all over the world converge at Namugongo to hold Holy Mass in memory of these matters. the Karuma Falls, where the river's momentum is much more furious as it hits the rocks that separate northern Uganda from the south. Amazing to see, but this is nothing to compare with the experience of the Makshon Falls, whose picture is backdropped with the vast national park, another of the country's game wonders. The Makshon Falls are in the middle of the Makshon Falls National Park. A real parade of the crocodiles, elephants, Buffaloes along the banks of the river, welcoming the visitor to their habitat with a lot of curiosity. This place offers an enticing retreat from the concrete bustle of modern cities. At Ngamba Island, one of the islands of the Sese Archipelago, a chimpanzee sanctuary was established. Here, a visitor can closely watch these friendly and playful primates in this exciting environment. center is where one finds the hotels, the exotic food restaurants, the cinemas, and the shopping malls. The National Theatre, an important cultural point, is located right in the center of Kampala, next to the Parliament of Uganda. One can trace the history of Uganda and take a peek at the life in Uganda at different generations at the Uganda Museum, found barely 10 minutes drive from the city center. And when it is night time, Kampala opens up. Kampala by night is a different spectacle from what one sees during the day. That is when all the different backgrounds fuse into the fun that is commonly Ugandan. This cheerful spirit was unknown 21 years ago. The country was then a melancholic place to be and bad governance reigned throughout the land. There was no security of anything and the economy had gone to the dogs. 
a protracted people's struggle led by Yori Museveni, the incumbent president, restored sanity into the country. Today, every five years, a new government and legislature is voted into power by an electoral process. This stability has foreseen investor confidence and an awakening of Uganda's economy from a dark limbo. The combination of peace, stability, and good governance has brought about a steady, fast growth in all areas of the economy, and Uganda now ranks high as an investment and tourist destination. The Pearl of Africa has renewed its twinkle, drawing from all the wonderful gifts nature bestowed upon it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.